Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Mary Beth. That piano sounds awesome, doesn't it? I'll let you read in the bulletin all about that new piano. It is a blessing. To be truthful, we wore the old one out. That's all I can say. Now, when some of you read the sermon title, The Big C, you thought I was going to talk about cancer, weren't you? Yeah. Well, that's one of those burdens that we've taken to the Lord and we've left it there. But no, that's not the C I'm talking about today. The big C that I'm talking about is confidence in Christ. If we have confidence in Christ, we have faith in Christ. And our faith is where it's at. According to the Apostle Paul, our weakness gives us opportunity for the Lord's strength to be revealed. Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I like a little bit different rearranging of words that mean a similar thing. This is the beginning of the Beatitudes according to the wording that Eugene Peterson used in Matthew 5, 3. He said, you're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. Well, those of us who've dealt with the big C as in cancer and other life issues know that that's especially true. When we're at the end of our rope, when we are in need of something that we can't find in this world, that's when our faith is especially important. I've come to know in my more than 55 years, <clears throat> our biggest human weakness is pride haughtiness, thinking we have all the answers. We have the tendency to think that we have the power inside ourselves. We have the vision, we have the willpower, we have the power to transform, to, to make a life, to, to do everything, including forgiving. We've been talking about forgiving, but for those really big issues of forgiveness, we know that the power to forgive doesn't come just from inside ourselves, no. That tendency to think that we have all the power in, inside ourselves, I think is what we were taught. We were taught that if we believe in ourselves enough, we can do anything, yes. If we work hard enough, if we're smart enough, if we're strong enough, if we're good looking and talented and creative and industrious enough, then we will be successful, right? That's the American dream. But the truth is, while a good sense of self-esteem is helpful at times, it can become a hindrance to our faith. It's only when we realize that the true power is God's power. As revealed in Christ Jesus, it's then that we begin to raise our Christology, putting our confidence in Jesus. Then we can put our faith in Jesus' power to heal, Jesus' power to transform, and quit trying to do everything ourselves. And Carol Lanfear sitting there smiling at me. She reminded me of this this week. Christ's power is revealed in our weakness. When we invite him to take, invite him to take the lead and heal our unbelief, our inability, our, our frustration, our angst. Perhaps self-sufficiency was the thorn to which Paul referred as having a thorn. Now, I use a big word, Christology. It's one of those thousand dollar words they teach in seminary. Christology 
is the way we interpret the person and work of Christ Jesus. The way we, we look at who Jesus was and what he did. If one has a low Christology, then we see Jim, Jesus simply as a mere human being. If, on the other hand, one has a high Christology, then we see Jesus as God incarnate, God come to earth in human form. Those folks in Nazareth that day had a very low Christology. They saw Jesus only as that boy who they'd watched grow up. Mary's boy, James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon's big brother. Matthew tells us that in the face of that low Christology, he could do no deed of power there. Hmm. We, on the other hand, know Jesus as our risen Savior. We've heard the rest of the story. This should give us, this should give us a much higher Christology. But too often, it still doesn't. And I believe we are reaping the fruit of that today in churches and around the world. And Jesus continues to be amazed at our unbelief. Why does Jesus matter? There are a lot of different answers to that question, but one of them is Jesus matters because he reveals to us the true nature and power of God. Not just the God of the Old Testament, all angry and judgmental is often pointed to, but the God of grace and forgiveness, who was also there in the Old Testament, but gets a lot less press. He's a lot less noticed by casual observers. We see this grace, graceful side of God in the promise of the rainbow, remember, after the flood? We see this promise in God's leading his people through that wilderness time and forgiving them for that golden calf incident. Yeah, we still have a lot of golden calf incidents going on. And in his continuing to provide for them in the wilderness despite all that grumbling and complaining. Oh, manna again? <sighs> yeah. God knew better. God knows what's possible for God's people when we live in faith, in justice, mercy, and peace. God's kingdom becomes reality, not just in the afterlife, but here and now, when we tap into Jesus' true nature and power. God came to us as Jesus to point us to the fact that God's love and mercy can change our present world. He can change our here and now when we trust and follow him. Jesus matters because it's his power, his Holy Spirit power at work that enables us to live into a new God reality through faith. God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one and the same. I don't know, to, know if you noticed in that naval hymn, we sang a Trinitarian hymn. First we sang to God the Father, then Jesus the Son, then the Holy Spirit, and then we talked about the Trinity. They are one and the same. Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. They are all part and parcel. The disciples that went out two by two had nothing but the clothes on their back, and they had to trust. That faith and trust led them to be able to bring the healing power of Jesus to every single place that they went. And the places where the people would not listen and would not receive them, that didn't stop them from bringing the word. They were able to shake the dust off and to move on to that next place. Some things just don't change, do they? We live in a time when not everyone will listen. We must do as those disciples did. Remain faithful to the message of Jesus. Love, forgive, and move on to the next person. 
offering Jesus' message of love and healing. We cannot stop. We must not let ourselves get discouraged when some won't listen. There will be others who do. There are millions of people who need the love of Jesus, and we, you and I, are the disciples of today. We're the disciples of today entrusted with the message, a message that must be lived as well as spoken, because you and I both know that a picture is worth way more than just a thousand words. A picture is ultimately convincing. I invite you today to raise your Christology, have confidence in the power of Christ, and live into his love and mercy. Teach the children. Model for people the power of faith, the power of prayer, the power of the body of Christ worshiping together, supporting one another, celebrating together like the disciples did when they came back, came back to Jesus, telling stories of, of healed bodies, healed relationships, hungry people fed, clothed, and giving, given that living water in those desert times of life. This, here and now, this is heaven on earth, one cup of water at a time one soul at a time. This is our mission, to make new disciples. People who will follow Jesus, think and act like Jesus, modeling their love after his. And it starts with us. It starts with us. It starts with us doing what Jesus told us.